Okay, now that we're in Rhino, let's uh, start by doing a file open. And we want to uh, come over here and let's change the file header to DXF. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, that's DWG, I'm sorry. DXF. And I have my video toroid for Rhino file open. Okay. And it takes a second for it to uh, download here. And I want you to note that the file unit will be in millimeters. Okay, I'm going to pause this while. Okay. And I want to make sure that the file units are in, the model and layout units are in um, millimeters. Okay, and we're going to click on uh, OK. And that brings in our file. It looks familiar, right? Uh, all of our work is going to be done in the top window, so let's maximize our top window. And also, let's bring up our layers palette here, and you'll note that we have a default layer. We have the cut line, mountain line, valley line, and text. Okay, I'm going to add a, um, I'm going to change the default layer. I'm going to change that color to cyan, and I'm going to change that name to reference. So we'll make that the reference layer. Okay. And what I want to do is that I'm going to select everything, and I'm just going to move it off to the side from the origin, like so. And now I'll zoom back in, uh, just like so. And one of the things that I'm going to do on the reference layer is that I'm going to get my rectangle tool and I'm going to type in 0 and I'm going to type in 12, 19, comma, 610 to create a rectangle that's that size. Now I'm going to take this and alt tap it and I want you to notice that that fits around each one of my sheets. Okay, fits around each one of the sheets. Okay and that's what I wanted to do and I'm just going to move this one over here for right now okay and now and let me go down let's start with the cut line and I'm going to lock my reference layer and now we have to go through the process of formatting each of our layers for um, laser cutting and basically what happens is that let's take our cut line first of all you notice that all the layers are black okay and if I were to do a, a select objects on my cut lines layers you notice that up top here it tells me that 616 block instances have been added to the selection what I need to do is that I need to turn those block instances into curves okay and the way that I do that is by using my explode tool and I explode it okay and now if I were to look at it in my properties it's 616 open curves which is what I want and now what I want to do is that I want to go back here I'm going to change the color of that layer to magenta okay go into the properties and force it by changing my display color also to magenta and I want to look at my print width okay and I want to change the print width to uh, to the hairline recommendation that that forces it to be a hairline now when I do that that all becomes magenta now let me go back here once again to the cut line and I want to select my objects here and you notice that I have 616 curves since I know that those are all external lines I'm gonna go back and join those right there and that gives me 20 closed curves which is the number of my parts okay so that's all joined together okay now I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna do my text and I'm gonna select I'm gonna change that color to red which is our engraved color for our text and I'm going to select the objects okay and right there it's text added to selection and they come in as a hatch or as a text object I'm gonna explode that and that becomes curves okay those become the closed curves and what I want to do after I do that is that I'm actually gonna come in to my properties and I'm gonna change that color to red and I'm gonna make sure that the print width is set to hairline 
okay so that now that's red okay now the next step is to go through and to come back to my layers and I'm going to go to my mountain line layer and I know that my intercuts are color coded blue okay and I'm going to expand this out a little bit I'm going to expand this out a little bit so that we see our line types okay so that we see our line types and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select all the objects on that layer okay and you notice that once again they come through as block instances so we're going to explode those okay and I go into my properties and those are now curves which I want and I want those to be blue and I can also set the print width to uh, hairline sometimes if it's like 0.025 the laser may see it as a uh, raster engraved and we don't want that now we note that our mountain line the line type is continuous okay it's continuous we want to change that line type to a dashed line okay and that makes that a dashed line okay and what's nice about Rhino version 5 is that the laser cutter will actually see that as a dashed line and not as a single line segment it actually sees it as a dashed line that's a beautiful improvement in Rhino and it makes this work a lot easier okay and so that's my dash line there and so I'll come down here to my valley line and I'm going to change that color to blue since it's also an interior cut and I'm going to go to my I'm going to go and select all of those on that layer okay well, let's zoom in so we can look at some of this and I'm going to go in and I'm going to change uh, the properties their block instances so let's explode them we have open curves which is what we want we want to change the display color also to blue and we also want to change the print width once again to hairline okay we go back to the layers now and we want to change this from continuous to a dash dot pattern dash dot pattern and you'll notice that now when we look at that that's a dash dot pattern uh, there uh, for those lines and it uh, it prints out like that and that's what the laser sees now that covers your basic formatting okay now one of the things that I like to do in order to get the machine to work a little bit more efficiently is that I like to go in and find like my smallest parts and I'm gonna find this part right here and what I would like to do is maybe is to do a slight adjustment to make uh, this work because this is a lot of work and it makes the laser cutting go a lot uh, quicker when when doing these dash dot lines so I'm gonna come into my options and I'm gonna come into my annotations open that up and I'm gonna go into line types and I'm gonna click on dash and right now that's set at five dash gap think of it dash gap I'm gonna make that 10 or let's go 5 and I'm gonna make the gap 10 so that way it has to do um, half as many and I'm gonna do okay and I'm gonna look to see for two things are there any pieces that are getting cut by that uh, because the the gap size is too big and also I want to make sure that there's like a sort of like a a 60-40 relationships between dash or cut and paper that's left behind when it's really tight like this sometimes with some of your cardboard or paper stocks it can cause that to break off so I'm gonna come back up here again and I'm gonna check on my dash dot line and I'm gonna change that value from this is sort of like dash gap dot gap I'm gonna change my gaps to four millimeters and I'm gonna click on OK and you note that here now I got a lot more paper left and I can fold that there and that's working out really good and that's really clean and once I've done that my file now is ready this is really ready for um, l processing on the laser cutter now I might go in and put my name uh, using my text curves and I'm gonna make these 20 millimeters uh, and uh, my name 
and contact so that if the uh, technician needs to contact you for any reason that information is there and of course you want that to be on a on your cyan layer uh, there and from here this is what's going to be needed for printing your Pepakura development or processing your Pepakura development on the laser cutter and that completes uh, the formatting of your files uh, from Pepecura, your models from Pepecura uh, workflow through formatting them for laser cutting. I hope this has been helpful and I may produce a couple um, additional tutorials that deal with uh, specific aspects of this process in a le little more detail um, uh, so that um, we can uh, really uh, cover this cover this area in a comprehensive way, but this should be helpful. Um, have fun.